So here we are, September 1st, 2012, at the town of Marineland Marina. We're celebrating our first anniversary. We've got a grand celebration going on here today. The newly restored town of Marineland Marina, a shining example of what can happen when government, private businesses, and environmental interests work together. It's a remarkable story. Yes, Marineland opened in 1938, and the three primary focuses that our founders envisioned was an attraction so that the public can come and actually look at different species of marine life. Science and research was extremely important for our founders, and really the most important thing was to be a, a movie studio. So we opened as Marine Studios in June of 1938 uh, so they could film underwater scenes for movies. The Marineland Marina was originally built to support Marineland Studios' oceanographic research and collection activities. Over the ensuing decades, it grew into a full-service marina and continued to thrive. When I first came to Marineland, it was, I believe, in the fall of 1975. I heard about a job over here with a fellow named Sam Gurren, who was the director of the Whitney Lab, and came over and talked to him and ended up uh, working here at Marineland. Turned out to be a 30 plus year career because this area is just so fascinating. I've never been able to figure out a place that I'd rather be. The things that was remarkable about this place is that when there was a larger marina store, they had a nice porch and it was nice and breezy and all that. So that was the gathering place for people that wanted to, at the end of the day, sit down, have a beer, talk to all the people, get caught up on the news, find out about who did what. For years, I made trips over to the way Abacos, and that entailed going up and down the intercoastal. And when going up and down the intercoastal, you're always looking for a nice place to stop. And this was a very nice place to be. It was a nice, relaxed place. Um, there were not so many people that said, no, I don't like to stop at the marina, it's too remote. It was more, I like to stop at this marina because it's remote. It was always a pleasant, warm and receptive place. Lots of trees, uh, kind of a natural environment. With the completion of the interstate system, A1A was no longer the main route for visitors coming to Florida. New attractions in Orlando drew visitors away and the Marineland attraction and the marina fell into disrepair. The last remaining uh, original founder sold his interest in the place to a group of investors from St. Augustine that were really looking at it more as a real estate investment, not a calling. Years went by when they were just doing minimal maintenance and it finally got so bad that when Jim Jacoby got here, um, he was looking at it and said, my insurance liability is just uh, too great here. I'm gonna close the marina and the last of the boats were emptied at that time. And the basin has been sitting empty ever since. Again, Marineland has a, has a rich history, but unfortunately uh, the hurricane ultimately destroyed the, the marina that was here. Yes, Hurricane Floyd was, I guess, the trigger, but the following hurricanes and even the big Northeasters uh, started amplifying the damage that Floyd did. The idea for restoring the marina came from Syntex's plan unit development approval that the town had given them. It was about to run out. The town gave them a three-year extension and in return, Syntex said, we will deed you the marina, then the town can start development. Funding for the marine land renovation came from a partnership between the Florida Inland Navigation District, the Tourist Development Council, and the town of Marineland. We got a lot of help from Jim Jacoby as far as labor and project oversight and then Klein Construction and Richard Hardy did the actual uh, building of the marina and the dockmaster's uh, office. They worked together very well. 
My role was mostly uh, just because I occupy the chair of mayor. It was really a decision of the town of Marineland, and I think spearheaded primarily by Mayor Netherton, to seek a grant from the Inland Navigation District to restore the marina. Commissioner Nets, of course, is the Flagler County representative on the Inland Navigation District. And he and Carl Blow, who is the St. Johns County representative, were both extremely supportive of this project. Uh, I worked uh, closely with Mayor Netherton to develop the grant proposal and to bring it before the Navigation District. It was uh, unanimously approved by the district and we provided oh, in excess of $200,000 grant uh, to the town of Marineland to do these improvements that brought back to our, to our environment and to our county and to our region uh, a wonderful aquatic resource. When the town was looking around for the money to rebuild the marina, I went to one of the Inland Navigation District receptions that was being held over at the Marineland attraction. Commissioner Holland was there at the same time, and she was saying, you know, the Tourist Development Council has created a capital improvement fund so that every municipality in the county uh, has $300,000 available and that was really the thing that made the whole thing possible. I served on the um, Tourist Development Council as the chair for about three years now and have been very involved with the town of Marineland. This is the district in which I represent and knew there was a unique vision that was set forth out here some time ago. What was lacking was um, the infrastructure. So uh, we collaborated, we partnered with the Florida Inland Navigational District and the Tourist Development Council and came together uh, with a grant proposal to find the funding necessary uh, to build the infrastructure. As is typical with any government project, there's a lot of red tape involved in these sorts of uh, endeavors. Uh, first, you need to do engineering studies to, to find out what you can do and how you can do it with the least environmental impact. Once the, the design work is done, once the engineering work is done, you go out for bid on a contract and you get a contractor who can do the work according to the specifications. Klein Construction was the low bidder. They were also very helpful in working with the town to try to uh, keep the costs down. Then it was just a matter of Chip Rush, who was the Jacoby, uh, I guess you'd say maintenance guy. He's the one that knows where everything is and how to keep everything working around here. Uh, he was the one that was around every day, making sure that problems were solved, all the uh, glitches were smoothed over. Part of FINE's responsibility is to be sure that we are spending taxpayer dollars well, so we monitor that entire process to make sure that, again, the end product is what we were uh, expecting to pay for. And we got it, and we got it in, in great respect here. Well, I mean, even pulling up here the day of the ribbon cutting was, was amazing. I mean, it was beautiful weather, you know, you had the music playing in the background, and you saw the boaters that were really excited. Uh, you know, sometimes ribbon cuttings can be very mundane. This was this was an exciting event for all of our residents, and the place was packed. I mean, you, standing room only, uh, people who don't own boats, but who understand the value of, of boating to our environment. When the Marinelanders from 20 years ago that knew the old marina and interacted with it came by and uniformly told me how glad they were to see the marina active again. That was the part that tickled me the most. The way we're going is pretty much in line with the vision of all the stakeholders. Without the development of this marina, without the collaborative partnerships that we formed um, to really enhance the educational component, none of this would be able to be achieved today. Oh, it's, it's, it's a great thing because we have a facility here that certainly is appealing to our local residents. Uh, if you have a small boat, you just want to take a day trip, this makes a great destination. You can come here, tie up your boat, hop in a kayak if you like, and get closer to nature. You can walk across the street to uh, Marineland. You can enjoy yourself a little snack while you're here. 
Well, the e economic impact that this project is creating in our community, um, we're seeing it in several different avenues. Um, not only the collaborative relationships that have been formed with Hammock Beach Resort and other lodging facilities throughout the community, um, but the Marineland has been sold out for the summer in regards to their touch and feed programs and in regards to their summer camps. And we see that not only as a true benefit, uh, not only to the attraction itself um, and to the marina itself and to the town of Marineland, communities and the county are seeing an increase in the sales tax collection and overall that's a true benefit and a wise expenditure um, of our bed tax collection dollars. It contributes to the overall economy of our county. Uh, one more stop, one more place for people to visit. Well, Chris Kelly has done a great job here, um, not only with his company Ripple Effects, but being the harbor master. He has been able to hire several folks by expanding on efforts out here. Um, he has um, been sold out time and time again. In a sense, he's created many different economic development opportunities, and that's the thing that I think um, needs to be addressed more than anything in different conversations throughout the community. I'm very proud to be part of the, uh, the community here in the town of Marineland because I see this as, as the, the melting pot in Northeast Florida for um, not only environmental concerns but recreation and mixing the two, the man-made environment and also the natural environment. And This is a place where people can really come together and celebrate that. Um, Jim Jacoby and his group with Carl Hamp really set an example and great leadership on how we could actually pull this together, how we could provide a marina for guests to come to, and actually how we could actually continue the environmental education out of this small facility. The marina facility consists of fixed slips and concrete floating docks for transient boats. Marina guests can enjoy free Wi-Fi, hot showers, free laundry, and free pump-out services. The town of Marineland Marina is designated a clean marina by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. We applied for the clean marina designation. It was about a three month process just going through all of our policies and procedures to make sure we had everything set up to meet their needs and expectations in order to qualify for the actual certification. We're surrounded by some beautiful natural spaces and the Marineland Dolphin Adventure across the street. We have the town of Marineland Marina surrounded by 90 acres of the town, which is called the River to the Sea Preserve. While our guests are here, they're going to find the surrounding community is just chock full of really interesting things to do. And uh, fishing is fantastic here. We have Fort Matanzas right up the road, quick bike ride or a good long walk. Uh, we've got the only natural inlet on the east coast of Florida up here, just beautiful panoramas bike lanes that run from Marineland, both north and south. In addition to kayak trips, Ripple Effect Ecotours is now offering a floating classroom experience, an exploration of the neighboring natural areas on a vegetable oil powered jet boat called the Ripple Effect One. The Ripple Effect One is a boat that's propelled by a jet impeller, so it has no propeller protruding from the bottom of the boat at all. The vegetable oil fuel is a renewable energy source which produces far fewer emissions than conventional diesel fuel. We can actually take people into the far reaches of the estuary without impacting the, the environment or the substrate, and then we can again take them out the only natural inlet that we have on the east coast of Florida, the Matanzas Inlet. Yeah, so again, the educational and recreational opportunities are endless. If you can think it, we'll try to help you to figure out if you can find it. The marina and its partners offer numerous environmental education opportunities, including the Florida Master Naturalist Program and various activities through the Marineland Dolphin Adventure. I teach what's called the Master Naturalist Program. That's with the University of Florida. It's through the Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences. It's a, it's a certification, it's an environmental certification. It's open to the public, it's non-degree seeking. Anybody can take it. It's for people that just want to know more about, hey, what is this hammock? What's going on on the dunes? What are these fish? Uh, this past summer we had a program where we were able to incorporate uh, the University of Florida Whitney Lab, the NUR, and talking about the watershed issues, ripple effect kayaks. And so all of the partners in the town came together for one of our summer camp programs, which was a tremendous uh, success. If you're looking to get into a marina and have an opportunity just to have a peaceful time, connect with nature, get away from the rat race a little bit, or just kind of relax and have a good time, bring your family, we'll be able to help you out and figure out a nice opportunity for you. That's what we would like to see a, um, an experience where 
you're a part of Florida, uh, you learn something, you have a good time. And the future looks bright. Uh, we look to our neighbors in the town of Marineland to partner with each other and really develop an eco center for visitors to come to Flagler County in this part of Florida. You know, what we have here is a great start. We've restored the marina, but as people discover and rediscover the Intracoastal Waterway and Florida and Flagler County, uh, it's my anticipation that this will grow. We're so close to other environmental agencies here with the uh, Estuary and Research Center and the Coastal Policy Center. I see this as a, as a focal point for education and research and just back to environment enjoyment. Yeah, the, the town of Marineland, it's, it's, it's really just getting going. Everything is centered around education, really making people aware of what these native communities are all about. I've always uh, wanted to promote a permanent population of 100 to 250 people because that's typical for most Florida small towns. So if we can get to marine land to that point without changing markedly the feel of natural beauty that we have and the fact that you're living in a part of the environment rather than surrounded by concrete, um, that will be the next big thing, I think. If we can do that, then I think Marineland will have uh, accomplished everything that I had in mind when I became mayor. My vision for the town of Marineland Marina is a place where people can come and celebrate nature at its best. There's not a better place to do that. Again, it will be a wonderful place to stop. It's a little gem.